Okay, welcome back guys to the last part of the punching bag tutorial. Now in this part, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be receiving the Arduino uh, readings and translate this into a vector which is gonna represent the direction in which the force is applied. And let me just see here. Yes, we get back into our script. Now, what we're gonna start, first of all, we're gonna use the ports, the serial ports. In order to use the serial ports, I need to include the system dot input output, and I'm gonna take the ports. And here, I'm just gonna privately initialize a private serial port. I'm gonna call it stream, as usual, and it's going to equal to a new serial port. Now this part, if you guys have not seen, I always use this slash slash dot slash because my com is actually above 10. If it's 10 or less, you can use just this part. You see this part right here? That's it. But if it's above, you have to incorporate this part as well, which is at the slash slash dot slash. And finally, I just need to define the speed and I'm going to use the default speed. On start, everything that you're gonna do is I'm gonna say that I want the stream dot open. I wanna make sure that it's open, and also this is very important. Don't forget it, guys. Is the reading timeout? Like I said, I from experience I try 25 uh, and 20 in the Arduino. But now before we get into the string reading, receiving strings. You guys need to know two things. First of all, about that string reading needs to run in its own threads and the timeout exception. Now, both are actually very related. And what happens is, let me just start here from a, a method in our enumerator. We're gonna read string method. And basically, guys, what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna say here try if the stream, let me just explain it to you, is open. Then I want you to try something, try. This is going to be reading and this is what you're gonna be catching. Then and catch the system dot timeout exception. Okay, so basically guys, what's happened when you are reading a string? I, I mean, this is how I uh, imagine what happens is that I'll be reading character by character, but since I'm going to be reading whole lines, the Unity does not know when the line ends. So if the line is too long or sometimes when there is no, nothing, it would say, okay, I give up, and it would throw a timeout exception. Otherwise, the program would freeze, and it's still holding. And, um, okay, uh, what else am I going to say? Okay, so the timeout exception. And the reason why I catch this because if you, typically the timeout exception would cause the program to abort, but by catching the exception, I would say, okay, don't abort, just perhaps debug or do something else. In my case, I'm not gonna debug it for now. And but when I receive the value, which is going to be in my try, what is it that I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be reading my values into a string. I'm gonna say string called the values or value. It's going to be equal what the stream dot read line. That's how I'm going to be receiving my string data from my stream. And I think there has to be some capital letter, perhaps. Yes. So what happens is that if there is line available, then I want you to store it into my string, into my value string. And now, as you guys can recall, I sent the X and I sent the Y separated by this guy. So, so how do I separate these two guys? I have to create a string array called values and it's going to be equal the value however I'm gonna split it split using this special character which is it was the the comma so what this does is that it's going to separate the first part which is the X into a string of its own and the second part into another string and both they are stored into my values such that values the very first value which is in values at index 0 is going to be equal to my x value and the values at the first index is going to be my y value okay so let me just remove these two guys so here I'm simply going to define a an integer 
okay I'm gonna say it's the X data and it's going to equal to what to values for the first component like we said I'm gonna copy and paste the whole thing for my Y values copy paste this is going to be my Y data and it's going to equal to the first. Now the reason why it's throwing me an error is because the values are strings. Now how do I compare numerical strings into integers? It's simply I think by I think it was yes, integer dot parse. I would have to say integer dot parse these two guys. That's how you convert a numerical string into an integer. And as you guys can see exactly I do not have any and before I do anything let me just debug the values debug.log just the x data for now and I want to save it now this is this is the part that I'm gonna talk that we talked about is about the timeout exception now we're talking about threads like I said I need to run the string reading since it always gives me a timeout exception into a thread of its own and we're going to be using something known as the coroutines now this is what a coroutine it's a method that returns an i enumerator and therefore it needs to return something what i need to return is this is what's gonna it's actually gonna be called yield return in this case i'm going to be using null now sometimes i can return a delay of one second so what i would end up with a loop that runs into just let me just because I want this to be constantly running as long as the program is I have to make while true right otherwise it would run just once but no I want this process to keep iterating and repeating here like this so what I end up having is a while loop that runs separately on a separate thread on its own uh, with a delay of null and the delay of null it literally means that I want it to run as fast as the update method so this is what I have while true so basically while the program is running if the stream is open then I want it to try to read if, it, if you can't read any values then it's gonna throw a timeout exception but I want it to catch it like don't do anything and then return back and keep doing the same thing now once you read the values we're gonna get this information we're gonna store that and at the end we're just gonna to log debug my data okay so guys this is getting much longer than I expected so I think maybe we're gonna split this into two parts and for this part we're just gonna be logging this information and let me just connect my Arduino Okay, so the Arduino is now connected. We simply have to receive this value. Okay, I'm gonna save it from here. And let me just re upload my Arduino code to make sure that it works. Okay, and I think everything is ready. So let's play this. Yes, IO exception I could not find because. The okay, let me get back to you guys. Okay guys, so I did check and apparently the USB was not connected well. So before we debug, I just added one piece of code and that is on start, we have to start our coroutine. So what you do is you type start coroutine and you pass it the name of the method, which in our case it's going to be read string. And that's all we need to do. So now back into our codes. Wanna see, play. We're just going to be reading, you see, here in the leftmost corner, guys, we have to look for values. Now, this is 0, and this is 2255, so I'm getting the values of x correctly. And I'll be seeing you in the next tutorial while we'll be converting this into a vector.